Planet Tech Lighting conclusion. We are at the end of the series. I thank you for joining me, but there are a couple other things that we should cover as well as bring the information together and learn how to use it. Check it out. So thank you for joining me in this video. If you've been following me in this series, I thank you for sticking with me. I hope you learned a lot. In this video, we're gonna go through all the information that we've learned in the previous video, put them together and learn how to actually use it or you know, use it in a useful way. But before we go on, if you're new here, you wanna learn more about aquariums or talk about aquariums, hit that subscribe button as well as that notification icon so you know when I make new videos as well as do live streams. Now this lighting series should give you a good idea about where to start when choosing your lighting for your planet tank. Now I'll be referring to some terms that we learned in the previous video, so if you don't understand what I'm talking about or you get a little lost, don't forget to just go ahead and start from the beginning by clicking this button here. It'll take you to the series beginning and you could just catch up with us. So let's recap a little about what we talked about in the previous videos. Now understanding the basics of aquarium lighting is important, especially if you're going to build a planted tank. And it's very important to also understand that you want to get the light fixture based on the type of build that you want to make. This will save you money and frustration in the long run. However, there are other options that allow you to buy, you know, more expensive options that allow you to actually tailor the needs to your tank as you build it. Now I covered this all in video one and it's all the basic concepts you need to learn as well as some of the terms that you're gonna run into while dealing with aquarium lighting for planted tanks. Now, as I mentioned before, there are three major factors to aquarium lighting and that's the intensity, the quality of lighting or the spectrum of lighting and as well as the coverage of light in your tank. These are important factors and important points that you must understand in order to have a great and successful tank. That was covered in video two to four. Now these are very important points to learn. So if you don't understand them, go back and watch those videos again. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments down below or join our Facebook group. We will answer them as best as we can and uh, help you out and get you on your way to having a nice planted tank. Now looking to buy or set up a lighting fixture for your planted tank can be frustrating and with all the you know advice out there that people are just throwing at you could get quite confusing. This is when people start talking about low tech lighting or high tech lighting. What they really mean is really low budget lighting or high budget lighting. Now there's tons of options out there for you. Now I mainly made these two videos just to help you understand and take a look at the different options you're gonna get depending on the price. Now even though both of these videos look like review videos for you know low budget options and high budget options, I really made those so that you could understand hopefully see that what you get is additional features, bells and whistles, as well as convenience if you pay a lot more. However, even low budget options can give you decent lighting for growing planted tanks. Now in video seven, we went over some random points. Most importantly, the rating of PER. PER is a very important rating. I think it's a little more important than PAR, even though they're kind of related. PER is something that we should actually be paying attention to and with the advent of technology sooner or later, it would be easy to actually get that measurement based on what's in your tank. Not only that, we also went over some terms that you will hear that is kind of related to old methods as well as the old tech. Sometimes it's still being used. It's still sometimes valid in a way, I could say, but again, it's all about nowadays about measuring par and per. Either way, it's something important that you should at least keep in the back of your mind so that if anyone talks about it and stuff, you know what they're talking about. Now let's go over some important tips that I have about Planet Tank lighting. Plan out or at least get a very good idea of the type of planet tank you want to build. This will help you buy the lighting fixture that you will need to grow the plants that you actually want to grow. This will save you a lot of money in the long run. Now if budget isn't a concern, then look into getting a lighting fixture that allows you to adjust the intensity. This will make it easier for you to adjust the intensity based on your plant growth as well as your plant load. That way it'll be easier to just go ahead and press a button, adjust the lighting rather than just you know raising it and, and lowering it and, and, and rigging up some kind of contraption to make it go up and down, up and down, up and down. It's really annoying after a while. Now some features like the ramping of the light, you know, making it feel like dawn and then noon and stuff like that, or the ability to adjust the color temperature, 
doesn't really affect plant growth. So, you know, you just got to keep that in mind. It might, you know, affect the cost of the light fixture itself. So if you don't need them, you don't want them, then opt for a cheaper lighting fixture that don't have those options, but has the same type of lighting stats. Now, coverage also includes the depth of your tank. If your tank is deep, then the lighting is going to have a harder time to get the intensity down to the substrate level to hit that carpeting plant that you might want to grow. So it's important to keep that in mind. You might have to put out a little extra more money to get the lighting fixture that has a lot more intensity to it or get ready to buy dual or multiple light fixtures to double up on the effects. Research, research, research. That's actually the key to having a very successful planted tank. Now I've seen some first time planted Aquarius set up a tank with gorgeous results. And all these people had one thing in common. They researched. When I talked to them, I'm like, well, how did you figure this out? Because you're navigating your whole tank like, you know, an experienced planet tank of Aquarius. And they're like, well, you know, I just researched a lot of things like watch your videos. But seriously, do your research. Just spend a little time to understand these things, especially lighting, because that is probably the major factor that's going to help your plants grow. The most expensive equipment does not equate to high tech. Okay, high tech can mean a couple of things for a lot of people. High tech could mean that, oh, you're getting really powerful lights, that's, and it's very expensive, so that's considered high tech. Some people consider high tech as the amount of equipment you need for the tank alone. You know, the amount of, like, oh, you have the uh, ultra fine radioactive, you know, filter, whatever, and you have the incredible Hulk lighting fixture that'll, you know, grow any plants if you just flip on the switch kind of thing. You know, some people consider that as high tech, but there are various meanings to it. Just because it's expensive does not mean it's high tech. As I have proved and mentioned before, low budget lighting options do grow plants and some of them do grow plants really well. It's really up to you, not the equipment. The equipment helps. Selecting the right equipment is really up to you. Selecting it correctly and using it correctly is all up to you. So don't get too hung up on the terminology. Remember, focus your attention on the balancing of your tank. The more light you give to your plants, the more that they want to grow, the faster they want to grow. So if there's more demand for growth, you're going to want more CO2. They're going to want more CO2. They want more CO2 and they're growing faster. They want more nutrients. And of course, if it's lower lighting, they're going to grow a little slower, less demand for CO2, less demand for nutrients. It's all about the balance of the tank. And if you don't understand balancing your tank, check out this great video that some cool dude made just for you so you can understand what tank balance means. And remember, arm yourself with the knowledge of lighting for planted tanks, and that will save you a lot of money and frustrations in the long run, and you'll have so much fun with this. I am honored that you have joined me on this journey, on this series about lighting. So, where do we go from here? The next series is the CO2 series, and a lot of people have been waiting for that. If it's already been released, you will see a link right here. If it hasn't been released yet, and you're new here, hit that subscribe button and notification icon so you know when I release that series. As always, if you have a comment or question, leave it down in the video below. Leave a like or dislike, depending if you liked or disliked this video. I love you guys. See you in the next video. Stay wet with your tanks.